Few people know his name. Nevertheless, he's a legend of Soviet and Russian space science. Boris Chertok was one of the men who made space accessible. Born into an age of wood and canvas airplanes, he found himself on the forefront of early space exploration. At 97, Chertok still worked, drove his car and gave lectures to the students. His career took off in post-war Germany, where he went as a member of the Soviet team, searching for the remnants of the Nazi V-2 rocket program. I consider it one of my achievements that in, in 1945 we managed to create a scientific research institute right there in, in Germany in contradiction to all the international agreements. Not long after, Chertok met Sergei Korolev, the person who managed to persuade Soviet leaders that rockets were worth funding, as they were the only way to deliver a nuclear warhead. It took years of intensive work before Korolev's rocket design bureau had a prototype ready to fly. Boris Chertok oversaw missile assembly at the new Baikonur Cosmodrome, in the remote steppes of Kazakhstan. Muddy drinking water was all we could get there amid the dust storms and the temperatures soaring to over 40 degrees. We had countless sleepless nights in the process of the rocket tests. But I now remember all this as one of the happiest times of my life. In August 1957, the R-7 rocket became the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile. I like being next to the model of the real R-7 <laughs> because it was this rocket that secured a breakthrough into space and opened up the space era. Even today, it is still being used in modified form, of course, and is the most reliable space launch vehicle. To Chertok, each new rocket was like a beloved woman. R-7's high thrust and payload capacity, unmatched at the time, made it the perfect vehicle to launch an object into orbit, something never done before. We prepared the launch of Sputnik without any great expectations. If it were to succeed, great. If not, no big deal. Our main task was to get back to building a missile capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. It took us, the Sputnik creators, four or five days to realize that the history of civilization would be divided into before the launch and after. And there was plenty more in his life after. Chertok was part of the team that sent the first man into space and later was key to designing the control systems of the Mir space station. Nevertheless, his name is forever tied to the first man-made object in orbit. After years of secrecy, his name first appeared in newsprint only in 1987, in an article commemorating the 30th anniversary of Sputnik. However, his unique life story is not lost. He left behind several volumes of memoirs called Rockets and People. Experts say it's the best source of information about the history of the Soviet space program, something Boris Chertok built his whole life with his own hands. Daria Pushkova, RT, Moscow.